For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and welcome to HetNet Happenings, where we take a look at all things DAS, Wi-Fi, small cell, and much more. Welcome back to HetNet Happenings, folks. We've got a great show for you today where we're going to learn a little bit about concealment solutions for small cell and outdoor DAS deployments. So joining me here in the studio today is John Fitzhugh, the CEO of ConcealFab, based mm -hmm. up in Colorado Springs. John, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know you're busy with IB Tough going on down the street, but we appreciate you coming in for a minute to uh, tell us a little bit about the company. So as we get started, maybe just familiarize our viewers with Conceal Fab and a, a little background on the company and the kind of work that you guys do. Absolutely, and thank you again for having me. So Conceal Fab was started about seven, eight years ago. We are headquartered in Colorado Springs, and we've been focusing on infrastructure solutions for DAS and small cell primarily in light poles, any sort of uh, integrated concealment solutions. We've tended to sh stay away from some of the more uh, traditional concealment like trees and clock towers and focus on more sort of standardized, ruggedized products that are uh, going to be what in our hope has the, the higher volume expectations. Um, Conceal Fab was actually, it's interesting, it actually started as a government focused concealment in SATCOM. And we decided that, you know, as SATCOM begins to phase out, antennas getting smaller, that uh, that would probably be a, a dying industry. So we've started focusing a lot more on the smaller antennas uh, in the cellular um, wireless business. And that's where small cell and ODAS really has uh, been a huge growth driver for our company. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I want to talk more specifically about some of your solutions, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the small cell ODAS market in, in general. And I know this is a, a big focus of uh, IB Tough, which, let me see, that's the In Building Technology User Forum. That's correct. I don't even have notes for that one, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that's uh, not a show that they typically let the press into, but I know there's a lot of very interesting discussion uh, going on about what to expect in 2016 around small cells. I guess, to my wit, I'm looking forward to a lot of uh, enterprise deployments this year, uh, corporate campuses, universities, colleges, things like that. But for these people that are looking at these deployments, it's very important consideration to hide it and to not have it be, uh, for lack of a better word, an eyesore on their, their property. So what are you hearing from your customers about their needs in terms of concealment? Sure, absolutely. And it's interesting when you look at the evolution of uh, a deployment, um, and especially with Verizon, where the Midwest is actually leading a lot of the deployment. So what we've seen is, and I'll take a couple of the Midwestern states as an example, they do a huge shot of like 300 plus deployments. And what they're doing is they're just putting stuff on poles, mostly in the sort of the rural, I'll call the easy areas because they can get it fast and they can get their numbers up. Then they start getting into the more difficult areas like the major metropolitan cities where all of a sudden it's not just you know your standard utility approval but now all of a sudden you have municipal boards, historical preservation societies, etc. who say well yes we want telecom functionality but we have a character of the city that we've been mandated to uh, preserve. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what ver those um, Verizon regions are running into now is you have to get there there is a certain level of approval and they're in front of zoning boards etc and they're coming to us for ideas on how to blend in with the architecture and that's a sort of been a big shift for them and I think and unfortunately it's also slowed down a lot of their progress so a lot of the regions who had very high aspirational deployment goals um, while they get through them on the again the easy stuff now they're starting to hit the the more challenging areas and that's where we come in to help them um, sort of address those aesthetic concerns yeah you know small cells it's an inherently challenging process because you can't really scale it every single deployment is unique and you mentioned when you get into these metros you really introduce a lot of bureaucratic layers that have to be navigated and it's not a one-size-fits-all solution because the planning board in Omaha might have very different requirements than the planning board in Lincoln, Nebraska. At the end of the day, a lot of these people treat a small cell deployment just like a macro deployment, which is that's just the challenge because 
And for sometimes people, the cost is almost oh, equivalent yeah, to. It's amazing. And for people like us that work in this industry, to me, that's just why are you impeding something that's really not that hard once you get your right of way and your fiber and your power access. But I got to think that as you approach these deployments and start the concurrency with these municipalities, that if you have a concealment solution on the front end, it's got to sort of ease that a little bit because at least you don't have to address that later, you know, this eyesore. So 100% agree, and, and it's actually an interesting challenge for us uh, as a company on, on two respects. One is, yes, everything has its own custom aspect, so how do you scale a company if everything is unique? So we've had to try and figure out how to hybridize that. So we have a lot of our solutions come modular. So we can get a radio section, for instance, or a power section that is, for the most part, static. And, we, and then the module or the customization comes in the colors. Do you need any special light fixtures that need to be integrated? Heights or radiation centers uh, vary a little bit. Um, so we, we've done some things that help us be a scalable company as well as help appreciate some of those um, aesthetic nuances. But number two, and not exactly sure how to solve this one, is when they are, it's budgets. It's mm -hmm. our customers' budgets. So, their um, incentive right now is to go in and pitch the cheaper solution because you know if they can get it done for X as opposed to 2x, they want to go in. But if they go in with the 2x solution and the you know the municipality sees it, the municipality is automatically going to want the 2x solution because it looks better. Mm -hmm. So a lot of and again it's not in all cases, but in certain cases our customer is going to go in with the the less expensive solution that's easier and quicker. And only when forced will they go in with the more expensive. So it's it's an interesting because if our customers, in in all reality, had their way, they would never do concealment because it's expensive. Right. And, <laughs> but you know, and I, I think one thing that ConcealFab does that a, a lot of other people that are playing in this space do not do, which is a really great move from my perspective, is how you guys work with the OEMs for the antennas. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about that and, and particularly the implications to a, a warranty? Yeah, absolutely. So it's the antennas as well as the radios. Um, so what we've decided to do is p take a partnership approach with a lot of the major OEMs. So, you know, we're, we're down the road with the Ericsson's, the Nokia's, uh, Alcatel, who's obviously now Nokia, Comscope, et cetera. And what we've been doing is some collaborative design work where we will come to them, show them our designs, how we're planning to deploy it and integrate their equipment. They will then um, look at it, in some cases, test and certify the thermals and give us a letter that says, hey, if you deploy this in a concealed fab enclosure, we will honor the warranty. There's been some, it has not been widespread, but there have been some occurrences where um, their radios will be deployed in uh, an unapproved enclosure, it will burn out, and then all of a sudden there's tension between the OEM and the customer who says, you know, why did you put my stuff in that enclosure? It burned out. How is that my fault? Because you never told me you were going to put it in there. I never certified it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really helping us give a more valuable product to our customer because they have the comfort in knowing that their uh, warranties will be honored should anything happen to the equipment. Okay, and then, you know, John, I also, and this is a, a very genuine question because they don't let media into IB Tough. Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to at the show? What do you think some of the main themes are going to be this year? Uh, well, hopefully increased deployment. Yeah. Um, you know, there, we get dribs and drabs of information on what, what budgets look like in terms of each of the regions. I'll be honest, like c certain regions had big aspirations in 2015 like several hundred, and I think they only ended up doing like several. Mm -hmm. um, other regions were, uh, like the Midwest, tended to drive, and I think that had a reasonable amount to do with the jurisdictional hurdles mm -hmm. faced in the Midwest versus in your Boston and your new, more traditional New England markets. So what I'm hoping to hear is that those who were uh, on the sideline to a certain extent in 2015 have now got their master lease agreements done with the cities and now they're ready to turn on the spigot so we'll get more of a national deployment than uh, just uh, what I guess a concentrated deployment. Yeah and you mentioned the Midwest do you see any sort of uh, geographic shifts in where the deployments are going to be do you expect more major metros to have this going on this year? Well I'm hoping to see California come alive. Yeah. Um, 
I'm hoping to see a lot of uh, things in uh, sort of the mid-Atlantic markets uh, as well as the Northeast. Um, they're making a lot of noise, um, which is good. Um, so we're really hoping, and you know, you guys wrote that article on New York, so obviously that gets a lot of uh, people excited, especially in the infrastructure That's solution right, yeah. business. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we'd love to see uh, some activity from that region as well. All right, John. Well, as we wrap up, maybe you can uh, tell the folks that are watching where they can find out more online about ConcealFab. Absolutely. So um, www.concealfab.com, uh, you'll link to our brand new product brochure and it's downloadable. Uh, feel free to call us. Uh, as well as, you know, we're, we're represented by several major um, manufacturing uh, rep firms, both on the East and the West. You contact them, more than happy to get in uh, touch with you and help you solve your deployment challenge. All right, John. Well, thank you so much for coming in to talk to us about ConcealFab. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in and checking us out here on HetNet Happenings. A big thank you to our guest, John Fitzhugh from ConcealFab. And I encourage you to keep up with us here at RCR TV. We've got a lot of great pro programming coming up in the next few weeks. I'm particularly thinking about our trip to uh, Barcelona for Mobile World Congress, which I believe will be our 50th episode of HetNet Happening, so we'll try to uh, bring you some great content from the Grand Fira there. In the meantime, for RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney. Thanks for tuning in. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HetNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HetNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.